Now, a lot of what I'm going to say is based upon foolishness. <laughs> Men of God have to. The Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. Amen? Cut that off. Cut that air off. I can't hear it. Say judgment <laughs> begins at the house of God. Amen. That means it starts at the house of God. We are not as Christians to judge the world. The Bible tells us that we don't judge the world. The world's already judged. But we judge the house. We judge those of the household of faith. Yes, you do. You do have an ability to judge a righteous judgment. If it were not so, then Paul would have never rebuked Peter for being a hypocrite not wanting to eat with the Gentiles when the Jews came around. He judged that. He would have never rebuked the young man and turned him over to Satan, the one that was having sex with his mother-in-law. And Paul said, turn that brother, just turn him over. What he's doing so bad, turn him over to Satan so his flesh would be destroyed. So there was a judgment. So we are to, uh, we don't call it judgment when we're talking to our brothers and sisters. It's really not judgment. Because, because we're saved and we have the spirit of Christ dwelling and we are sons and daughters and sons and daughters uh, uh, sons and daughters love correction and rebuke and judgment uh, so we don't call it we don't call it judgment when we're judging each other we call it correction if you change the word from judging to correction then you'd understand the true meaning of judgment judgment corrects something that's out of line. If it's out of line, you, you have to make a judgment or an assessment to correct it to bring it back into line. So the job of correction is to bring something back in line. It's not to destroy it. It's not to kill it. It's to bring it back in line. But sometimes when something is so far out of line, it takes a harsh, let me say it like this. Have you ever been on a highway you was driving somewhere and you was getting sleepy and you get the dozing and and all of a sudden you may have accidentally got off and you feel that uh, side of the road where that uh, they put those divots that do, 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 you hear that and all of a sudden you just you make a, a hard correction you're so far over that you made it was a hard correct it wasn't a you didn't gradually get back over it was a, it was a fearful it was fearful that I'm over this far I didn't know I was this far over so it took a y'all y'all great get what I'm saying so, so there was so that had so you had to make a harsh correction. In that harsh correction, the whole car swerved. Everybody moved. Everybody shook and jumped. People bumped their head on the window. Everything happened. But that's what needed to happen in order to. It was the situation was so serious. It warranted a hard correction. Are y'all there? So this is all what I'm saying is going to be prophetic today, because I'm talking about foolishness. <laughs> talking about foolishness. So the Lord. Right before I came, right before I came, I don't. That's why I don't like watching uh, this foolishness that they do in Christian world sometimes. Cause I am a person that I can't just walk away from it. I'll walk away, be hearing stuff as I'm walking away, and then I'll I'll see that this needs to be corrected. We have to correct that, amen. So um, I'll get into it as I talk. But anyway, the the the. Uh, the, the, the original title that I had as I was coming to church was called um, um, actually it was called Jezebel's Whores Amen <laughs> It's called Jezebel's Whores Amen And uh, as I studied this chapter 18 I got down and I said oh okay I said no this is the rainmaker So in other words there's, there's something when, when, whenever, if, if you remember the story where Elijah shut up the heavens, amen, with a prophetic word and said, declared it would not rain, amen. And instead of Ahab, uh, of course, and his wife seeking to find out what's wrong, that God would not release rain on his people, they sought, uh, they sought other ways. Are you understanding what I'm saying? They didn't consider that their, what they were doing had a, def, a direct effect on the lack and the chaos and the death that they were experiencing in their crops and their livestock. They had not uh, fathomed that they had something to do with it. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? 
So because they were uh, so focused on uh, being great that they fail to understand that there, there are processes and procedures in God. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? That must be followed, and if you violate one or two or three, then there will come a season where you will not feel or sense the rain. The problem is, is when the rain has dried up, people still go on. Not understanding that once you since once once the rain of God has dried up, you're on your own. Everything you're doing is in your own power. Everything you build is under your own strength. All the people you gather, you're gonna have to keep them all. Say amen. Whatever you build, you're building it by yourself. Because once the rains have dried, the strength is limited. You're on your own. Say amen. Now. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, this was the, the prophetic understanding I had as I looked at this Preachers of L.A. And some of these reality shows that I'm seeing now, and I'm starting to understand, Lord, what is going on that we are so far away from biblical, say biblical, biblical standard, that we are... That when you hear men of God talk now, you don't hear the rain anymore. Yet, they, their platforms are bigger without rain. Are y'all, are y'all, can y'all get what I'm saying? I told you I got to deal with this because, uh, you know, this is a, this is, this is troubling now. At first I was going to, I was going to pass this over and say, you know, well, whatever, to each his own. But, but I think God does call, this is the last, God's calling prophetic voices to speak. You know, what God was dealing with me before I came, he said, you know, he said, the problem is, is that nobody will stand up and rebuke anything. Even in the government, nobody will rebuke them cats that's fooling around, messing with the money. Nobody rebuking nothing. And because, see, 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 without a rebuke, without a prophetic voice that will speak to the, to, to the wrong, it can't never be corrected. See, people, people won't, see, I remember for years, uh, all around the country, people was praying, praying, revival, revival, running all around the country, revival, 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 revival. Oh, we in revival. They calling it revival, yet the qualifications for a true revival wasn't on it, but yet they called it a revival. Why? Because people wanted the hippie feel good, bless me, good feeling, ex spiritual experience without correction. But the true power of God does not operate where there's no order, where there's no correction. Because why would God bless a person that's in error? So before he blesses you, he corrects the error so that, y'all don't want to talk about this. So, 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 so if you study and if you look at even our modern Christendom, and I am told you this is prophetic, I'm telling you I'm talking from a prophetic standpoint. If, if the modern Christendom, you see that everybody is saying blessing and God's going to do this for you and God's going to do that for you and the people are just throwing their money at the screen like they can't, like ain't no tomorrow. 69 cent blessing, 557 blessing, 103 blessing. People done gave all kinds of blessings to blessings to get more blessings. Say amen. But the problem, the reason why the people have to keep going and paying for gimmicks and tricks and keep on paying to get more and more blessed is because the preachers won't convict them. The preachers won't preach a word that brings correction. And the correction will make them stop doing what they were doing and then they ain't need no, buy no more blessings. But because confusion and chaos is profitable. You don't think it's profitable? What, look at what happened when Apostle Paul and then went down into Ephesus and started preaching. They started bringing the people in the order, true order. Demetrius and them, he's cast over and making statues. He said, man, he's hurting our bread. As long as the people were ignorant and confusion and chaos, we was getting paid. But once somebody comes and separates this light and darkness and error and truth, then we're exposed and our business starts to suffer. So don't think every ministry wants. Talk back to me. Are y'all, are y'all, are y'all trying to, I'm trying to get y'all to understand what I'm, what I'm saying here. God always tells us to consider our ways. Say consider. So we are in a terrible time. 
It's terrible, but it's great. I'm going to tell you why it's terrible. And this is a straight prophetic word. The, because we're at the end of the old system. The end of the old system. The end of the old whore system. The prostitute system. The same system that the world has that gets a gift and blows them up and puts them everywhere and say, man, and prostitute them. And then they fall. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the system is designed for you to fall because there's no, listen, there's no grace beyond a certain point. What do I mean by grace? Certain, you get so high sometime. Oh, did you know you can go too so high that there's no rain? You get in an airplane, it'll be raining on the ground. You can get up to, so high above the cloud, there's no rain. So, uh, y'all didn't catch that. Come on, come on. I told you, I'm just going to talk prophetic. You get it or you don't get it. Either. These ministries have built themselves so high that there's no rain. Now, when the, listen, when there's no rain, you can only preach sunshine and only. Every message has to be sun shining. I, I taught my daughter something. I told you she has, she, she, she's into uh, horticulture a little bit. She's growing a few plants. And, I, and, and, and she didn't know. I said, you know, honey, I, I said, because we're growing uh, some stuff, you know, hydroponic stuff where you can grow stuff under lights. I, and I told her, I said, you know, Hannah, you know, you have to cut the, did you know this as much happens when you cut this light off? The plants still do stuff even in the dark. There's just as much happening when the light goes off. If you don't cut the light off, the plant is missing a certain cycle. Every time we cut that light off in the morning, the plant's bigger. Because something happens even in darkness. Do you even know a seed is in pitch darkness before that thing will germinate? So there is, there is some worth to being in darkness. So what happens? Talk, come on, talk to me. Can we just talk? I'm trying to give y'all something. If y'all can just see what I'm talking about. What, see, when we're, when we're only hearing and being preached sunshine, say man, then we, 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 we have no understanding of dark seasons, of night seasons. Not realizing that that plant is still growing even in the night season. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to grow better in the night season. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so now, because if you turn it on this television, all you hear is sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. You got millions of Christians thinking, what is wrong with me? They are telling me everything's supposed to be good. I'm supposed to be blessed and ain't supposed to have no problem. And everything's supposed to be, what is wrong? So you got millions of Christians not understanding or not have been informed or prepared to, to understand, oh no, to get the benefits of the night. So they run around confused, think something's wrong. Now the confusion is needed because if you, if, if you stop being confused, you would grow and mature realizing I must go through this. Come on, I'm, I'm way out there. I'm, I'm with my, come on, talk to me. Are y'all there? So, the, the, listen to me, I said we're at the end of the old system. What, what, what happens at the end of the old system? Oh, oh, Lord, help me please get this out the way I see it. At the end of the old system, what happens at the end of the old system? Let's, let's, let's look. What, what do men do when they, what do men do when they no longer need God for success? This is what's happened in ministry now. We have a formula for success. These churches have formulas for success. Some of them, even secret societies, have, have formulas to be successful. You hear what I'm saying? What happens when we are, no, when God is no longer needed? We go too high. We build a tower of Babel. We go too high. We get so high where it's no longer raining on these levels. The problem with this is, is there's a deception at the top because at the top, they only see sun. They can't relate to the bottom. The system is now corrupted because, oh, God, help me, because, because the Bible says that this anointing is supposed to go from the urns, from the head, and flow all the way down. 
But when the top only sees sunshine, they dis say disconnect. They disconnect from the base. Once they disconnect from the base, there is an alternate reality. That's when they come up with Hollywood stuff after they, they disconnected from the base. Can we, did anybody talk back to me? Are y'all there? So, so once this happens, this is to show you we're at the end of the system. They, once they come to the end of the system, what does God have to do? Destroy it. God has to judge it. The Bible said, he, God looked there and said, look at Nimrod and them. What are they doing? Uh, if, uh, look, everything they look, I'm going to have to, we're going to have to go down here and mess this up. So what does God do? He goes down there and confuses it, destroys it. Say amen. amen. He causes a misunderstanding. See, you trying to figure out some of you are who are really trying to walk with God and you want to hear the Lord and you walk, trying to walk close to God. You living in misunderstanding and you don't know why. Why don't I understand them? Why can't we connect? Why can't people, we, I mean, we all say, you, it's what you say most of the time, because there's a disconnect. Why? Because, but because God is destroying this system only by bringing a misunderstanding. He confuses the languages and all of a sudden what I'm saying, you can't understand me no more. What you're saying, I can't understand it no more. Can we all talk and not talk? Are we there? So this is what is happening at the end of this paradigm. Are y'all there? Now let me give y'all, let me give it to y'all the words so you know I'm telling the truth. Look at this. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is a note I wrote down right before I came to church. It, it was called false prophetic canopy. False prophetic canopy. What blocks the rain? False prophetic canopy. A false prophetic canopy makes the people, it distracts them from it raining or makes them think it is raining. That's why you go to many churches and you think you feel the anointing. You hear people that's now not even saved saying songs and you think it's anointed. And you don't know why do I feel the same thing here that I felt here. Can we... <laughs> Are y'all there? Look at, look at uh, uh, 1 Kings 18. Tell me when you get there. Look at chapter 7. Now I'm going to break it all down so you can know where I'm at. I feel like I was out there somewhere. Y'all got to catch me. Verse 7 says, And as Obadiah was in the way, is that right? Verse 7. Okay. And as Obadiah was in the way, Elijah met him and knew him and fell on his face and said, Art thou that art thou that my Lord Elijah and he answered him and said I am go tell the Lord behold Elijah is here and he said what have I said that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab he said, what? He said go tell Ahab I'm here he said no man why would you want to get me killed tell Ahab you're here verse 10 says as the Lord thy Lord God liveth there shall no nation or kingdom whither my Lord have not sent to seek thee and when they uh, when they and when they said he is not there he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that that they found thee not. And listen to what Obadiah, he's a prophet too. He's saying, listen, he's saying, he said, he said, he said, he said, when the rain stopped, the king, the, the, the leadership sent out looking everywhere, trying to find out where is the, what stopped the rain? Who did it? Where is he at? So it ain't nowhere we done looked. What he's saying is, we've tried everything. Y'all got what I'm saying? When the rain stopped, people try other ways of irrigation. People come up with other solutions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Let me show you something. Let me keep going. Now, 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 oh, oh, listen. When the rain stopped, people looked for other ways and voices. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To manifest what only God can manifest. 
Now the people that they're going to, looking to, know they cannot manifest the rain. These are the Jezebel's whores that sit at that table. They couldn't prophesy to make it rain no more. So the job, so that job was to deceive. Cut that arrow. Y'all there? Come on, y'all now. I don't know if y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell y'all. Are y'all there? When the rain has stopped. By a true prophetic move, or by a true sovereign move of God, when God drives up a thing, talk to me. People go looking for that former thing. They want to see that happen again. They want to know why it didn't dry up, right? What they run into are people who know they cannot. They cannot make it rain. So what they have to do is to fool you and make you think what you're feeling or either make you comfortable in your thirst or make you think that you are feeling it when you're not. This is the modern ministry. They no longer can make it rain. So they must come up with a system and an order to make you think you're feeling something so that you won't question. Talk to me. In the book of Isaiah, the Bible says, when y'all gather together and y'all get blessed and get y'all feast, he says, you lose your blessing before you leave. Now, oh, he said, he said, listen, you remember when in the book of Isaiah, I think it's around chapter four or five, when God is judging him and through Isaiah, Isaiah is talking about, look, I'm tired, God said, I'm tired of y'all feast. I'm tired of y'all doing all this sacrificing. I don't want to come no more. Talk to me. Are y'all there? He says, he says, Isaiah's telling them that, that you cannot pretend that you have something that you don't got. Let me say it like that. Are y'all, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, thank you, Lord. So we have to pretend that we have it. But we have to do something to cause the people not to know what it is. We have to pretend we have it, but we got to make the people... We got to do something so they don't know what it is. So now we must revise. We must do revision to cause you to revise what the Bible said so that you never question that we don't got it. Are y'all, are y'all, are y'all, are y'all there or not there? So this is what we have now. When you have, uh, l- l- let me help you. You ready? You ready? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you right now so you know. Every month, we have a conference promising you breakthrough, promising you blessing, promising you deliverance, promising you woman weapon of power. We promise it. You come here, you're going to connect with destiny. Talk to me. Not only do they promise it on every conference, but every television program when it's going off if you do this you will break through talk to me now because I know that I can't not make it rain in your life I have to figure out a way to make you think you got something and and, and, and manipulate you never to question it Can anybody tell? I, I'm, I'm, if I'm over here, I'm over here. Are y'all, are y'all with me or not with me? Think about what I'm saying here. The Bible says in Isaiah, your, their blessing will, they go to, they go to church, even something, you go to the feast, you get blessed, your blessing leaves you before you leave the church or leave the place where you feasted at. Come on, talk, oh, oh think about what I'm talking, think about what I'm trying to teach y'all. Because you know that 
uh, uh, uh. The, the best way I can describe it is if a doctor gave you medicine and you never got better, it would stand the reason, did you give me medicine or did you give me the placebo? Now, because you call this placebo, this sugar pill, medicine, I'm not questioning it. Because you said it was medicine. So I'm actually telling you you're receiving something when I know you're not receiving nothing, yet I have manipulated you never to question it. Tell me this ain't what we're doing. Tell me this is not what we're doing. How can everybody on Christian TV say God told you to give to them? If you gave to everybody that told you to give, you would be dead broke. You can't give. Y'all don't want to talk to me. You can't listen to Christian radio. This bag and making you feel guilty. You try to figure out why is it so much stress. Now you know we are giving church. I enjoy giving. But I'm trying to show you that it's okay to give. But when the motivation is for me to get you to give by promising you something, knowing that I have no rain to quench, no thirst, to grow no crops, to fertilize no seed, I have to make you think what's growing in your life is God. So what happens? You, whatever you just received and all that hype and praising, you, it's, you leave, it's gone before you leave. Then you stay in a state of confusion. So now we have people that's been in church 10, 15, 20 years. Who am I? What's I'm called to do? What am I called to be? They don't know who they are still. Why? Because all they've gotten is they've, 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 they're listening to people who are sitting at Jezebel's table. And Jezebel only had prophet, the prophets of Baal that she could prostitute to, pre, to preach her will so that the people never knew what the word of the Lord really was. Is anybody hearing me or not? Come on, I got to close. Are y'all hearing me or not? Y'all want me to close? I can close. I got this revelation. Do you want this? Okay. Look at this. Look at, look, look at this. I'm going to show you something. He says, uh, verse 12, and he says, and it, and it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. So when I come and tell Ahab he, and cannot find thee, he shall slay me, but thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. He said, listen, man, I ain't trying to get killed by you. If I'm going to go say you're here and you're going to be here, they're going to kill me. Look at verse 13. He said, was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel, when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? When Jezebel slew, we, we, listen, we, listen, we come into the end of a system. At the end of this paradigm, at the end of this system, we see the most gross, out of whack, out of order stuff that has been permitted because we at the point where this thing is about ready to die. It's about ready to be destroyed. So she started killing the true prophetic voices. This is the reason why you can't find I know you can't find two Two prophetic voices that are truly prophetic. Now, I'm not talking about the, 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 this old prophesy for $100 stuff. I'm not talking about I see, I say, I see, I say, say. I ain't talking about that either. I'm talking about that preachers are cutting right on the cuff word. You can't find nobody saying nothing. Let me tell you why. No, let me tell you why. Because the true prophets in this time are being slain by this Jezebel spirit this prostituting ministry spirit that is trying to silence the voices that have reign. Because if, if, 
if, if, if one ever was to get loose and this prophet was to make it rain, it would automatically say that my system is false. Oh. This is the reason why you know we come into the end of it and this spirit is raining because where are the prophetic voices? When, when you stand up and speak the word of God strong, you get persecuted. People hate you. They call you a hate. They destroy you. When you talk a true, just preach the strong word. See, we get, we, see, we're a little messed up about prophetic and prophets and stuff. See, we think prophets is all about they hear from the Lord and then they tell you what God's saying. What we really don't understand, the, the true characteristic of a real prophet is boldness. The boldness of a prophet gets them killed. So when, if you see people that are prophets and they, and they scared to say something, trust me. I don't know what they got. But a prophet is compelled. That's why Jeremiah said, you know, I, I, that was a time I got pissed off at God. I said, I ain't, I ain't preaching no more. I ain't saying nothing else because I keep getting in trouble. He said, when I said I wouldn't speak his word, it's it, like fire came. It was fire was shut up in me. Man, we preached that about praise and that wasn't about no praise. It was about the word of God kept coming to him to where it was shut up in and where he had to. He was compelled. That's why Paul said, necessity is laid upon me. I got to say this thing. If I don't preach it, the rocks will cry out. That's compelled to be a prophet. Uh, does anybody want to hear what I'm trying to tell you? Okay, so this 13, verse 13 was a, a key verse. It says, was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred uh, men of the Lord's, a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by 50 in the cave and fed them with bread and water. So the prophets are slain, the prophets are hiding, the prophets are not talking. You can't hear them. They only in certain places, and many people don't know where they are. Say, man. Sometimes they're hidden for preservation. I ain't got time to talk about that. Why are you thinking? Why come I ain't over here? And ain't, God ain't done nothing in my life. Maybe He preserved you. Maybe He was preserving you. Maybe if you was out there, you would be judged with these prophets, with these whores, uh, these uh, uh, Jezebel's whore prophets. Maybe that's why he didn't let your ministry go international yet. <laughs> Trying to save you from the judgment that's going to come on this false system. Woo! I'm saying more than what y'all even said. Y'all done. Y'all don't want to talk no more. Uh, let me get on. Look at this. Verse 14. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord Elijah, here he shall, and behold, he shall slay me. Now, Elijah said, as the Lord liveth, the host whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? Y'all there? Art thou he? Now Ahab the king, he know who Elijah is. Art thou, are you the one, are you the one that's stopping it from raining? Are you the one that's troubling? Now listen, now Israel, who's Israel's God's people? He's asking a man of God, are you troubling God's people? Which should let you know God ain't with them. Amen. Elijah goes to the system and the system's response is, no sir. Amen. Amen. You're troubling us. What you're saying is troubling. That's why you keep getting in trouble because what you're saying is troubling to a system that's designed for maximum deception. Just, can, anybody, can anybody hear what I'm trying to say? Look, look at this. Look, 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 look. So, uh, verse 18, and he answered, uh, I have not troubled Israel, but, but, listen, I ain't troubling Israel, but this is what happened when you correct When you correct this foolishness, like when I had to correct that preachers of L.A. foolishness, I called it foolishness. 
And people told me that I, I'm, I was judging. I said, no, I'm correcting it. And I said, why are you talking? I'm not troubling you. I, it ain't got nothing to do with you. They are the ones that I'm troubling. They are the ones that need to be troubled. To force them to realize that they have taken the, the, the sweet nectar of Jezebel and become her whores. Pipping their gifts for money and fame and fortune while making a mockery of the name of Christ and making people think this is how we live. It's foolishness. Say amen. It's foolishness. I have to say that. I told y'all, now I ain't, it's ain't when, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm putting this out. That's why I'm saying it's strong because I know it needs to be, it needs to be dealt with. Are y'all there? Look at this. And he says, um, and he says, look, I, you know, we ain't, we, 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 we ain't, we're not troubling the church. It's funny how when people get awards and get accolades, they want it to be them. Thank you for recognizing me. But when a rebuke comes, why are you coming against us? <laughs> but when it's a, a, a place of prestige, thank you for recognizing me. But when a rebuke comes, why are you coming against the body of Christ? <laughs> no, I ain't troubling them. I'm troubling you. I'm not judging you. I'm assessing your foolishness. You do know that we have to Assess foolishness. Things that cause others to err. Let me go. Look at this. He says, he says, no, I'm not, but thou and thy father's house. You know, that system you come from. Not only am I troubling you, but that system you come from. That whole system that doesn't tell the people where, where we are truly in this nation. Where, 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 that, that system that doesn't say nothing about abortion. That one that don't say nothing about homosexuality. That system that don't say, y'all don't want to talk about this. That system that don't show up for nothing political. That system that just sits there and, 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 and smooths over with, 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 with Jezebel poems to lullaby the people into a false sense of security so that they can afford their lifestyle. I'm saying it. The whores. That's what you call a person that sells out, that sells their gift. If a woman went out here and sold her body, what would you call her? If, if, if a man or God, if you sell your gift, that's what you are. If somebody can purchase something that was never meant for you to sell, that was never meant for you to, to use in that manner, then you prostituting it. Can we talk or not talk? He says, in that ye have forsaken the commandments. He said, look, I, he said, you know, you know, it's funny. He said, you know, see, see, people say, why? Come on, come on, come on, talk to me. Then people say, why y'all hate? Why everybody, why see people just hating? People just hating. It's like, no, 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 look, look. He says, he said, look, I'm not hating on you. He said, you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. I'm only saying something. <laughs> I would have, I would have had no need to say nothing. But you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and you didn't forsake them in secret. You didn't have a private battle that you was dealing with that somebody came and exposed. That's different. You put your foolishness on display to influence the masses. Therefore, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, I'm coming to give you a hard correction. Talk to me. Look at this. I got to talk back. Look at this. And, and listen, he says, he says, now, he says, and thou has followed Balaam. Balaam. This is the spirit now we're dealing with, Balaam. This child molesting, uh, pedophile, predator, uh, 
Hophnius and Phineas predator ministers. I said it. We got sisters can't go to church if they're too cute. Predator ministers. You got to watch your sons now. And if you're a man, you might have to watch your tail too. It's predator stuff going on. Say amen. This spirit of Baal, that is the spirit of Baal that has permeated, that's permeated like yeast through dough, the body of Christ from one side to the other. There's a scripture in the Bible that says the whole head is sick. The whole head, there's no soundness in it nowhere. That's, that's what, can't you feel it? There's no, you be looking, you be trying to find somebody that's stable. You 